Hi everyone, Deacon Gill here from Christ the King on another one of these beautiful days that we've been having. Um, and as our time in intentional and quiet isolation is coming quickly to a close, you know, as we're getting ready to reopen, I can't help but think of a story that came out almost at the beginning of this quarantine time from Venice. You might have seen that story a number of weeks ago, how because of Italy's going into its own form of isolation and quarantine, the city of Venice, which is built on 118 small islands and connected by bridges and canals, and usually a bustling city with gondolas and boats moving back and forth in the river, without that happening, stillness has come to the canals. And what used to be a sort of turbulent water where the silt underneath the river was dragged up because of the boats, all that has calmed down. And now you can see fish swimming. There's a story of dolphins coming back to Venice and even jellyfish swimming through the canals because the water is now clear and you can see deep. You can see deeper into it. And I can't help but think of that story when I think about what we can take away from this time of isolation and quarantine. Because throughout the Christian tradition, we know that Christians have always seen times of trial or, or isolation as moments of growth. There was an early movement in Christianity that led people away from the hustle and the bustle of cities out into the desert, where they could hear the voice of God, see more clearly God's grace at work in them, and see where they still needed to respond to the call of the gospel. Many of us have experienced something similar to Venice during these past few weeks. But just like with Venice, the stillness also means that we can see ourselves. We can see our interior life clearer. And we don't always like what we see. Slowing down can be a dangerous thing. And again, those early Christian monks knew that. They didn't go out of the city in order to avoid the distractions of the world. They went out into the desert to do battle, to do spiritual battle with the evil one and with temptation and to wrestle with it and to overcome it. Just like in Venice, when the waters of our lives settle and we can see deeper, we can also see the garbage and the pollution that might be there that we normally don't have to look at because we can't see it. And that's actually a good thing because if something can be seen, it can be dealt with. If we don't know it exists, we're just gonna keep going about our day, not realizing that this thing is there and needs to be addressed. When we take the time to slow down, we can discover all sorts of things that we didn't have to look at before. Anxiety or fear, depression, impatience, self-doubt, hurt. All of these can become more visible when the busyness and the distractions of life settle down. And the first step to addressing those is to see them. One of the Bible passages that catechumens pray with on their way towards full initiation to the church is Christ healing the man born blind. One of the most frequent healings that Jesus performs is he is restoring sight to the blind. And by giving sight, Jesus invites us to walk by that sight, to use that sight to walk the path of becoming who God is calling us to be. There may be things we don't want to hold on to after this isolation is over. Maybe during this time you've seen something within yourself or a habit you've been carrying for way too long that this quarantine has led you to say, you know what, I'm done. I just want to put it away and start afresh. This is a great moment to do that. But you may have also discovered something that you overlooked before, something really valuable that you want to hold on to afterwards. Intentional time with family or a daily walk around the neighborhood, a time of peace and prayer. There can also be good that we discover during this time that we want to be more intentional about, connecting with old friends and maintaining those relationships which are so important to our lives. I say this carefully because I know of how difficult a burden this has been so, for so many of our parish families and for how so many of us, this actually hasn't been a moment of quiet or stillness, but even more work and even more stress of kids at home and work and school and all of this tied together. But even then, these things could bubble up, even in the midst of the stress, either that anxiety and fear or the goodness that we want to hold on to afterwards. Part of the hidden gift of this time in isolation and quarantine might be
who we decide to become after it's over. Without asking for it, we've been given a chance to look deeper at ourselves, to examine ourselves, and to see which parts of us still need the gentle work of God to bring more fully into who he desires us to be. God has given us a chance to look and see more clearly. How are we going to use that sight? From all the pastoral team at Christ the King, we hope to see you very soon, and God bless.